Yo, what's up, guys? We got Pokeum here. Today, we're going to be talking about the uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield tier changes for April. Shout out to Kay for passing me all these um, graphics that we're going to be seeing on the screen. But we'll be going through this, and I'll be going through and looking at the uh, the actual uh, tiers and, and how they're affected and whatnot. So uh, there's actually only one change um, for OU in terms of what it got. So we'll go by the rises, then we'll go to the drops. But in terms of rises, Halucha did move up to OU, which is actually why I featured uh, Halucha and the BL Knights the day before uh, April 1st, because I kind of figured that it would move up to OU, especially because myself and I know others have been spamming it on the ladder, uh, whether it be on Veil or, well, specifically Veil. Veil is the, the one I've been spamming it on the most, and I know I've seen enough of it. Uh, Lucha is solid. Lucha is very solid, especially because of Clef running special defensive these days. So like normal uh normal walls for lucha would be obviously age slash and then you also have uh typically physically defensive clefable but they're all running spadef now because of pokemon like cinder uh cinder no nope. uh because of kirum uh as well as obviously dragapult uh and its ability to basically set up on uh mons like excadrill depending of course with veil up um as well as checking Bisharp, which is very, very high in usage in the OU tier, uh, which we will look at at a second, uh, is really, really, really nice because it's a good anti-offense mod. And just its high speed tier in general is very, very solid. Uh, my favorite set is the Swords Dance Sky Attack uh, Acrobatics Close Combat set. I think it's easier to get off than the White Herb Close Combat set, especially because of all the ghost types in the tier. And even then, like even though Sky Attack misses when you need it most, getting them flinches and whatnot and just boosting up your acrobatics is extremely great for uh lucha i've dealt with age slashes with Lucha as well um like just because it was just that strong right it's very 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 easy to boost and just threaten out your opponent too uh so it's uh so Halucha moved up to the ou tier about time so we lost that as a beyond night uh mantine moved from uh, we'll talk about the rises first and then we're going to go to the drops but mantine moved from ru to uh to uu now uh in order to explain that first off uh we want to look at the uh the uu tier as a whole uh and i also have another graphic that i can show real quick so let me just put the uh, the uu tier uh thing right here just so we can look at uh usage in itself but as you can see right there um one two and three and usage are all checked by mantine so they're all checked by mantine uh, Mantine also deals with number 10, which is Chandelure. It's crazy, by the way, because this has changed so much. Like, you don't see um, Poltergeist up there in, in top 10. You don't see Weezing as number 1. You see Mamoswine as number 1. And Mamoswine is currently being suspect tested. Uh, so it's very interesting to see that. But it deals with, of course, um, Pokemon Home and all that stuff and them changes and all the drops and whatnot. Toxtricity moving up, too. Uh, but it's interesting. We do see Mantine at number 41 in usage over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my, I don't think you can see my mouse, but uh, we see a number 41 in usage and its ability to uh, defog on the Webers, Rabombi, um, to check Chandelure, check Incineroar, check Cobalion if they're not running Stone Edge, which they should be running Stone Edge in my opinion, especially if they're SD Shuka, I think that Stone Edge is incredible, especially because of Golisopod, and number 14, checking Golisopod uh, is very, very important. Golisopod is very good in uh, Yu Yu right now, Heavy Duty Boots allows it to reliably check Mammal Swine and just switch in and out, I mean Heavy Duty Boots, Yu Yu is basically Heavy Duty Boots the movie, right? Like, you got Incineroar right there, you got Golisopod, um, I've seen Obviously, Mantine runs heavy duty boots as well, so doesn't have to worry about that. You have Avalug right there, Araquanid. Um, so, just its ability to defog on uh, the majority of the tier and threaten with Skull Burns too. Very, very, very solid uh, for, for UU in itself. So, it ended up moving up to uh, the UU tier. And uh, that means that RU can no longer use it. Now, if we actually look at the RU tier itself, we're going to just look at RU real quick just to see how this affected. Whoa! Well, whatever. Mantine was number one in usage in RU, so I mean, that's a huge change. Uh, this is the same thing that actually happened last time with the tier changes, where Gigalith moved up to UU, and it was number one in UU as well. But if we actually just look at the top ten of RU, uh, Mantine checks Steelix, Mantine can check Vileplume if it runs Air Slash, Mantine checks Salazzle, Mantine checks Passimian, Mantine... Uh, with Haze can check Snorlax, but it has to worry about Body Stem, so not really. Mantine checks Barrascuta, and uh, Mantine can check Thunderboltless Gudra, though Gudra is a BL Knight now, so you don't have to worry about that. And it can check Ndidi. So like it's a 
it's very, very, very solid. Checks, checks Mudsdale, check Colossal. And I'm not saying counters because um, all these Pokemon have such a ways they could break through via Toxic or Protect or super effective moves uh, and whatnot. So it was just it's super, super solid. So to see that Manti moved up is very interesting. Uh, it's, I think it's cool for like number 34 right there, Cramorant. I hope <laughs> my little tournament I have going on my Discord isn't the reason that Cramorant's number 34 usage. But um, that mod gets better, which is pretty cool when you look at that. Uh, I see Sun getting better as well with Ninetales. Uh, so Drought looks a lot stronger. Uh, because Mantine was just something that you couldn't really muscle to. And now that means that Snorlax is basically necessary to deal with uh, those sort of things. And also Salazzle. Uh, Salazzle gets better too. So Snorlax is kind of necessary to deal with that. Um, as well as Sun. Uh, because the others, uh, Gujar is no longer in the tier in itself. So uh, I just see Sun and just fire type attacks. Like Charizard is already a staple, right? But I see like Ninetales getting stronger too. Whether it be offensive specs. Like it just looks way better now with Mantine being gone. Because the only one that could take... Like two hits reliably from that Pokemon is Snorlax with Thick Fat, and uh, I believe also I mean, there's there's a few more. I'm sure Colossal can take, uh, but it doesn't appreciate though because it doesn't have reliable recovery. So yeah, that's interesting to note. Uh, so that's a pretty big change for I don't know why Bishop is here, but that's a pretty big change for the uh, the tier in itself losing Man Time. Scrafty. Uh, Scrafty, wow, Slurpuff, I was, I was going to call it Sigilyph, because we just did Sigilyph yesterday, but Scrafty, Sigilyph, and um, the Vikavolt all moved up from NUB to RU, so we lost two BO, well, we lost three BO Knights, but we already did our, uh, we already did our, our Vikavolt one. I wanted us to do Scrafty and Slurpuff, because I knew we'd lose them eventually, but yeah, if we go back to looking at the RU tier, if you go back to looking at Ryu, Scrafty is very solid, um, especially like whether it be Dragon Dance or even the uh, the rest sets. I know a lot of my boys have been running uh, Dragon Dance, especially because Snorlax is just so good. Scrafty is a nice check to that thing. Uh, doesn't care too much about Zatu unless it's running Dazzling Gleam, uh, and just being able to set up on a lot of and checking like Silvali Ghost unless it's running SD Explosion. Um, it's it's solid in itself. I like that Slurpuff is number 35 in usage. Now Slurpuff did get Belly Drum back via Pokemon Home. I know that Sticky Web is okay too, especially when you pair it with offensive support. Um, and it it looks better right now. Sticky Web actually looks even better right now because Mantine is gone. And Mantine is like the best defogger in the tier, if you just look at the tier. Like Mantine is easily the best defogger in the tier. And then Slurpuff can actually still Sticky Web plus Belly Drum. So I can Belly Drum, knock out Zatu, Sticky Web up after. I mean, there, there are some decent spinners there. I think Colossal is a decent spinner, personally. Um, and obviously, there's Silvali Steel and Silvali Ghost uh, to defog as well. Uh, I think Scrafty also moved up too because Sableye is so good. Uh, just like as a Passimian check, being able to, and getting Encore as well, and being able to Will O Wisp and knock off. So Scrafty uh, moves up because of that as well. And Vikavolt's just a wall breaker. Uh, you're a special attacker that doesn't care about Vileplume, Steelix, and Mantine. Like, you're, you're a good Pokemon, right? So Vikavolt moving up to that as well. And we also have Rhydon moving up from NU to RU. Rhydon is also a check. Uh, Swords Dance Rhydon can be a check to Snorlax. Uh, it can be a check to Salazzle. Uh, it can break through Steelix. Um, check Charizard too. Uh, unless Charizard's on Sun itself with Solar Beam, obviously. Uh, because besides that, Charizard doesn't really have the best move. I mean, uh, Specs Fire Blast, Rhydon doesn't appreciate. Uh, so it's cool to see that Pokemon move up as well. Guys, also let me know your thoughts on these as we're going through them. And one other thing I just want to say, that I do have my uh, Drop a Draco merch somewhere here. There you go. Drop a Draco merch available until tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day to pick up Drop a Draco merch. You can get it for 15% off by using code Draco. So if y'all want to pick it up, feel free to. Uh, but yeah. Are you taking some BL Knights from us? And same thing with OU taking some BL Knights. And then we have the PU to NU usage stats. Uh, and we'll look at that real quick. Let's go ahead and look at the NU tier right now. But I'm going to get this organized even more one day. Uh, but just to show you, also like the, the fact that Scrafty moves up is pretty, well this is, this is NU in itself, but Scrafty got banned, but like as you can see it was banned like later in the month, so you saw that it's like number 7 in usage right there. But we see that uh, from PU to NU, um, 
Clefairy moves up. I was about to say Cleffa, like no way. Clefairy moves up, uh, Ninjas moves up, and Ninjas. Uh, I think that the fact that Ninjas um, moved up is the biggest thing because that frees up PU so much. And I'll, and I'll show you in a second just the PU stats. I don't play much NU right now, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, and you did lose one of its staple ground types in Ride On, but obviously they still have Santa Conda, which is number four in usage. Um, now, I don't play as much uh, PU right now, but what I do know is that Ninjask and Mawal are on every team, and Mawal is kind of necessary because Ninjask is really, really, really freaking good in the PU tier for its high speed tier, for its infiltrator, its its avail uh, its ability uh, yeah, its ability. I'm saying its availability. I'm saying it's probably taking um, its ability to uh, swords dance up and still speed boost. Um, a speed boost. I don't even know why I said infiltrator, but like to run heavy duty boots, more uh, bulkier sets with uh, U turn, uh, protect, even still sword dance, or to run like no item acrobatics and and checking fighting types and um, and whatnot. Uh, it's just uh, sorry, Blender hitting me up. Uh, it, it, it's just it's just it was a really 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 good Pokemon in the PU tier and. I know NU losing right on is pretty big. That was a good check token Maru. That could check Haunter. Uh check, check Toxic. Like Pokemon that could beat right on, right on could beat too, depending on it. So that's really nice. I mean it frees up Jolteon a little bit better too. Um I'm just looking at the the, the ground types here, right? So you have Santa Conda, you have uh, Ride On, you have Palaswine, you have this Stunfisk right here. That's about it. That's it, right? And Golurk. But Golurk is weak to Shadow Ball, so I don't count Golurk. Um, yeah, so that's one less check for, uh, for Jolteon though. I'm pretty sure Santa kind of not going to tear at all. But Jolteon's number 13 uses. That's really interesting to see that. It's, is it just that good that the fact that, I guess there's not a, a lot of wish support unless you count Clefairy, which has it. I know Togo tomorrow has it too. So, I mean, even the specs Jolteon can eventually wear something down with, uh, Shadow Ball. Again, this is me just, just like analyzing. I, I, I don't play, I haven't played a lot of NU right now. So take everything... I say with a grain of salt. For those that do play NU, please give me your thoughts as well because I would love to, to know. And uh, I just want to look at PU real quick too just to show you how big of a change that was. I play, I'm pretty sure Mawal is number one in usage and Ninjask is number two. Yep. So to see the PU tier... Oh, look at Stone Journer in top 10. What a beautiful Pokemon. Please give it an ability that actually helps out like you know everybody. But to see Mawal number one, Mawal is basically necessary because Silvali... I mean, Ninjask is just so good, right? Ninjask, in theory, beats basically everything in top 10. Uh, besides, like, like Mawal ran like Rocky Helmet or they ran Leftovers uh, just to punish a Ninjask because Ninjas would run heavy duty boots or like they'd be uh, a bunch of defoggers. You see Silvali Ground up there at number three. Silvali Ground's a good defogger that can beat number one and number seven. Also, offensively, it can beat a metric. Actually, with the fact that multi attack now has, uh, you know, 120 base power, it's basically a Brave Bird. Uh, with no recoil from every single Pokemon, uh, it's just very, 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 uh, very strong. So, um, like, it, it's a good offensive and uh, support mon, too. And it's a good defogger that you have up here. Uh, I like that Carcoal is number 12 in usage. So, that's just to show you how big it is to get rid of hazards because Ninjask is number one. So, PU losing Ninjask is, I think that's very actually, I think that's very good for PU because it means you're not forced to use. Uh, Mawal on every single team. So I do think that Mawal usage will go down next month uh, just because of that. Uh, they also lost Silvali Water, which is not even here. So, okay. Oh, number 30 on the list. Silvali Water checked Arctivish. So Arctivish might be a Pokemon that we see a uh, move up, but we have Lapras as well with the Water Absorb. Arctivish also checks Arctivish because of Water Absorb too. Um, so that's interesting to see that moved up to the next tier. Look at Hatchroom. That's crazy, man. These babies. Clefairy was number 14. That mon is gone. That's a good special wall. Checking Pokemon like Lipard too in general. And uh, it's pseudo check throw. Pseudo. Because you could be knocked off and you don't appreciate that. And like Manetra could switch a Ryu and whatnot. But well, I'm excited. I'm excited. I might I, I might dive back into PU because I, I really didn't like like these two together, like I've lost so many times to Ninjas. I've also won so many times with Ninjas, but I'm excited to see how that change uh, ends up making such a huge change uh, or how it actually impacts them. And then we have Wishy Washy, 
which moved up from PU to NU. Uh, I don't even see wishy-washy on this damn list, so let me look at the NU tier. Uh, wishy-washy cut at number 48. I have, I have no idea. Like, I, I've seen support wishy-washy with leftovers. Not support, but like a bulkier variance with leftovers, which still hit incredibly hard because wishy-washy has such good stats. So that's a, that's an interesting one. I'm glad that Phalanx at least made it to a uh, state at NU this generation. I think it would have been... Or at least had the, the usage to stay in NU. I think it would have been a little bit sad to see that mod. Look at Pikachu chilling at number 44 as well, Fractured. I just think the coolest thing about uh, PU is the fact that you have like the baby of Violet Pokemon. But yeah, that's, those are my thoughts on the Rises at least. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. We're going to be heading over to the drops right now, but I'm going to take a quick break and record BL Nights with Blender, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Now we're going to be talking about the uh, drops, which I think are really, really interesting because UU has definitely changed uh, quite a bit. And RU is going to have some fun as well. Uh, okay, I guess technically NU too, like that. You can say it about anything, well, you can argue. But uh, Obstagoon dropped from OU to UUBL. Now, Obstagoon was actually very good in OU uh, prior to Pokemon Home's release. Uh, with the basic release of multiple fighting types like Terrakion and Keldeo, uh, Curum, which is incredible at breaking, I would argue better than Obstagoon just because Ice Beam is so spammable and it has Freeze Dry now. And then, of course, we got Zeraora too, which is a faster Pokemon that also threatens it with close combat. It kind of made, I felt, Obstagoon, I want to say, like, useless, in a sense. Like, I would rather use something like Bisharp as a Dark type. Bisharp was already good. I think it got even better with Pokemon Home. But I would rather use Bisharp as a Dark type over Obstagoon, personally. Um, the problem with Obstagoon is it's strong as a balance breaker. So it's good versus, like, Clef, especially because they're running Spadef and everything now. But its inability to really threaten those faster Pokemon, like Zeroar, at least in Bisharp's case, it can um, Sucker Punch. And also, like, basically everything Obstagoon can do, Bisharp can do too. Beat Clefable, Bisharp can do that, arguably better. Um, knock Off, Bisharp does that better because of Swords Dance. So Obstagoon does that bulk up, and Obstagoon doesn't worry about the guts, uh, the burn because of its guts ability. But Obstagoon, unfortunately, doesn't have any priority either. While it is relatively bulky, um, had it been base 100, I think it would have made a difference in terms of right here instead of uh, base, what is it, 95 speed, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that would have made a big difference, I think, for Obstagoon too, because a reliable Pokemon that's like faster than Kyurem and can knock it out with close combat would have been big. But uh, yeah, honestly, Bisharp is just a way better dark type right now, and its ability to actually threaten things uh, with Sucker Punch, Knock Off, Iron Head, uh, Swords Dance as well, just really makes that difference, I think, for uh, for Bisharp versus Obstagoon. So Obstagoon ended up moving back down to UU, but because it was already banned in UU, it goes to UUBL, which means we got a new BL Night. Actually, I think we uploaded it today. Uh, this is supposed to go before that video, but this is definitely going up after, that's for sure, because I already have that video uploaded. Um, but yeah, I think if Obstagoon got Swords Dance, if Obstagoon got Extreme Speed, if Obstagoon got Belly Drum, anything like that, just, I think Extreme Speed would make a huge difference uh, for it. If it had anything that Light Noon really had, um, or even Sucker Punch would make a pretty big difference too, because this is a type of Mon that, yeah, it was good when Rotom Heat, uh, when Rotom Heat, Corviknight, Clefable, Size, and Tilbert on every team, but you know, you take out Rotom Heat there, and uh, you, you, you mix that up with Zero Aura, uh, Corviknight is running physically defensive specifically to deal with Bisharp uh, because it has body press and body press already deals with Obstagoon, Obstagoon being four times a week as well. Uh, it's just, I don't think Obstagoon is as good as it uh, was. But let's talk about the OU to UU changes. We have quite a few drops, Darmanitan, Rotom Wash, Sylveon, and Torkoal. Those are some pretty big drops. Uh, we're not going to start from Darmanitan or Rotom, I'm actually going to talk about Sylveon because I think that's the easiest one to explain the drop. Uh, Sylveon was a solid... Um, was a solid OU Pokemon, right? It's not bad. Sylveon is not bad at all, right? It's not. But because of the fact that Clefable got teleport now, and it can it can still wish protect, and it can teleport past that, it's a way better wish protector. So this, this it's really hard for me to justify saying, okay, yeah, use Sylveon over uh, over Clef, especially because um, Ductra was also banned recently, so Clef can run fully specially defensive, which means that it can still, t before it had to run like a mix of defense and special defense, like enough of a death with calm nature to not be knocked out by plus two flash cannon from Hydreigon, which Sylveon can do naturally uh, with like 16 spadef or not even spadef nature, I'm pretty sure. Or, um, but also it didn't want to lose to like Sash, Dougie or, or Bandit Dougie, right? But now that Doug Trio is gone and can't trap, and do everything. Clefable can uh, be free to run max special defense, max HP, allowing it to take on the likes of Dragapult and more uh, more importantly, 
cure him right now. Specs cure him. Uh, so it kind of just overshadows Sylveon as a wish passer. Also the fact that it has magic guard so it doesn't have to worry about status or hazards. And it has teleport so it can basically go last in the turn and pass those wishes 100% of the time. As long as Clefable is alive or doesn't get flinched. 100% of the time at the end of the turn to uh, anything. Whether it be Corviknight, Sizem, so like basically anything that appreciates it. So it's a it's a way better wish passer, especially with teleport. And honestly, Sylveon just went down. There's very few reasons why I need that. Sub Nasty Plot Hydreigon isn't really existing right now anymore. Which Sylveon would be better versus. Uh, also, Como runs soundproof uh, sometimes. So, or bulletproof, it depends. So like Sylveon doesn't has to risk either running Moonblast or not hitting them with Hyper Voice. So that's something I end up going down in usage. I think that's a pretty cool thing for the U tier because again, if we look at the UU tier right now, um, Sylveon's like, it's not bad, right? It's not bad and it can deal with Noivern, can deal with Gardevoir, deal with Umbreon. So it takes advantage of those really common Pokemon as you can see right here. Can deal with Flygon, has Mystical Fire as well. Uh, can Combine Sylveon beats a Nasty Plot Celebi via Mystical Fire. Uh, Sylveon resists Bug from Glyspot is fast, it can Hyper Voice it out. Like it's, and again, it has that Mystical Fire to deal with the Blade too. So it's not a bad mod at all. And I think it's going to be a pretty cool fit for the UU tier. Um, they, which already has Vaporeon and Umbreon as Wish Passers. But just another Wish Passer that can actually fit as a Fairy type so you don't have to get smoked by Noivern, right? Like the best Noivern answers in the tier are, is Gigalith. Defensively, Gigalith is the best Noivern answer. And then you also have some other uh, defensive Noivern answers like Mantine, Umbreon. I think that Sylveon fits up with all those. It doesn't care about specs. It has Hyper Voice. It doesn't care about anything. And it's just really... Uh, Fairy is such a good neutral move, which is why Gardevoir is top 8 in usage. Because if you actually look at that, um, Cobalion, which is a Steel type, doesn't resist. Uh, Incineroar, which is a Fire type, doesn't resist. So um, it's just... Because, you know, they're, they're, they're secondary typing. So, Sylveon is actually a really cool addition for the UU tier. And I'm excited to see it and wish passing and how it can do. Um, also, another fairy type. Not that UU is shy of fairy types. They have Weezing. They have they have Gardevoir. They have Primarina. Like, they have a bunch of fairy types. Rubombi. So, um, but it will be a, a nice uh, wall. And I think a good offensive presence. I also think that Spec Sylveon can be very good, too. Uh, because... It can be a, a strong wall breaker, a wall breaker, kind of similar to Gardevoir, except Gardevoir is faster than Toxtricity, which makes a huge difference, right? But even then, like, Spadef Sylveon can eat Boom Bursts and stuff from Toxtricity, too. So, yeah, that's going to be a pretty big change. Now, next up, we also have uh, Torkoal and Darmanitan. I'm putting them both together because I think this makes a difference because now um, you can use a viable Sun user uh, in the tier. And I say, well, by that, I mean that before Ninetales, I believe, was the only thing available. I guess they wanted to use Vulpix, too. Um... And unless you you ban drought, which I am going to check right now, I don't think that's the case though. You you did they even update? They haven't even updated these man. Okay, they'll update them soon. But unless you you ban drought, which I don't think it did, uh, sun looks kind of powerful. Uh, you have weather ball Venusaur down there as well. Um, you still have uh, Darmanitan now, right? Choice ban Darmanitan in itself. Uh, Flare Blitz, Tui Kios, everything in the sun. So that's like a, such a cool thing. But I do like that Torkoal went down because I'm, I'm specifically talking about Torkoal, then we go into Dermanton. But I do like that Torkoal went down because we can also have some like, like actual viable weather wars here because Gigalith previously would be the only, in my opinion, viable weather starter or weather ability starter in, um, in UU currently. Uh, so. Uh, Torkoal has that ability to not really care about wheezing, can rapid spin, can spam Lava Plume. Lava Plume can, can body press as well, so you can actually threaten things like Gigalift too. So a very in really interesting thing to see Torkoal down there, especially because I think that Sun has uh, potential in you. Of course, if, if uh, they ban Drought, I know in Gen 6 they ban Drought. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if it's this generation as well. I don't think so. I don't think, I just think the Pokemon weren't as good. Like, why would I want to use Ninetale? But Torkoal can actually provide something outside of nine tails which is defensive support and also rapid spin but yeah darmanitan is a really cool pokemon because if you look at numbers one through ten it has moves to deal with every single one of them right like even flirbits in the sun like actually doesn't want to take it same thing with noivern does have access to rock slide earthquake has super power uh u-turn for momentum it has a higher speed tier that toxicity wheezing gardevoir and cinnaroar uh which i think is also a really big thing in channeler which i think is a really big thing for darmanitan so i'm very excited to see that pokemon um Put in work uh just clicking choice band clicking life or i know bulk up heavy duty boots is also something that people are running right now as a wall breaker and heavy duty would be such a great addition for these fire types so that's a really cool one too because 
Uh, it allows it to also eat, like, you know, close combats from uh, Kobalion, pivot around Intimidate Incineroar, because it doesn't really care after that, just bulks up and whatnot, and also uh, breaking through uh, you know, Goliath's body, the Aqua Jet Goliathopod and whatnot. So it's a, it's a really uh, nice addition, and, you know, as Rockside man for Mantine, uh, you can also hit Chandelure and the same thing, so... That's nice. Flare Bits and Earthquake. That's kind of all of the coverage you really need on bulk up their mantan. So I'm excited to see that. Now, in, ter uh, in terms of why it fell from the um, the OU tier, I think that... I don't think their mantan's bad, right? I don't think their mantan's bad. I don't think Torkoal's bad either. But right now, I think the two terms, uh, the two types of teams that are good in OU are either uh, Hyper Offense or um, literally just Hyper Offense or just like a fat balance like really fat balance with like Corviknight, Wish, Teleport, Clef, and Seismitoad specifically. I think Seismitoad makes a good thing because Dermantan being weak to rocks, Dermantan not really being able to come in on multiple hits, like even those Moonblasts start where uh, start doing damage. And the fact that Seismitoad has a million usage in the uh, in the OU tier and we'll show OU usage. Did I not have OU usage at all here? Okay, we'll show OU tier usage right now. Um, Seismitoad is number 11, Toxpex is number 10. Uh, if this is not Galarian Darmanite, you know, it doesn't break. It also doesn't break through Como unless it's banded in the sun. Uh, Bisharp threatens it with Sucker Punch. And if it's not Scarf, I mean, it always has to be Scarf. If it's Scarf, it doesn't break through Tox Specs. Uh, you literally switch it in. It still has to deal with Rotom Heat too. Uh, even Hippowdon, which is physically defensive right now, can deal. And then you see Dracovish at number 13 as well. Like just mods that it can't specifically deal with. Of course, Dugtrio was also around. Uh, prior to its recent ban, which makes a difference in terms of like, you always have to click U-turn. If it's Sash Duxture, you click Flare Bits, you get a kill, you die, you know? So, I don't think this was really the metagame for Darm. I do think that with Dougie being gone, uh, it for sure, uh, not for sure would have been OU, but at least could have made a difference. Like, at least in this as well, with like Dougie being gone. So I think that was... Uh, I do think that Dugtrio obviously being around and the talk specs moving back up in usage and whatnot um, makes a big difference when it comes to Darmanitan in itself. Oh, let's just smack my mic. Uh, but yeah, and I also think that Sun, like Sun isn't bad, but there's people running double weather now with Hippowdon plus Tyranitar. It's crazy that Tyranitar was only, uh, just shy of being UU, which is insane to me. Like a metagame where Tyranitar is UU. Wow. Um, but yeah, with Sam being so popular, with Dragon Ball being so popular, Corviknight. Uh, I don't think Venusaur is bad. Like, Venusaur already moved down, right? But you can still use it in OU. I don't think Venusaur is bad at all. But it kind of like... it. Top 10 kind of throws off, uh, you know, using Sun. Or at least using uh, Torkoal in a sense. Because everything... Nothing wants to take hits. And Torkoal, you come in, you go cleft to pivot, you teleport out as they go into their Venusaur or whatever. And you go Dragapult or you go uh, Como, which you can't even touch. Um, back and forth. Sun has to be up for Weather Ball, whatnot. Kyurem comes in at full, things like that. Uh, so just the metagame shifts uh, really made a difference there. And last but not least, we have Rotom moving down in usage. Um, Rotom Wash, rather. A little bit surprising. And I wonder how the U tier is going to handle, uh, or how they're going to feel about Rotom Wash. I don't think Rotom Wash is broken. Uh, I do not, but... Uh, I, I do think that Rotom Heat is by far the, the best Rotom form uh, because of its ability to uh, deal with Ferrothorn, obviously, Corviknight in itself. How even uh, even Size Until it doesn't want to take boosted Nasty Plot overheats, right? Even though, even if it does have Wish Support from, um, even if it does have Wish Support from Clefable. So I think that uh, Ferrothorn makes a huge difference. But I see me, I think Rotom Heat makes a, a huge difference, is way better. Excuse me, Rotom Heat's like number one Rotom, right? Not even based on you, just in general. I think it's number one Rotom right now. But um, it's really hard to to justify using Rotom Wash too, because uh, like unless you're using Sub Nasty Plot, and even then, uh, you're missing out on coverage potentially. Like if you're Sub Nasty Plot, Dark Pulse Discharge, uh, you're missing out on coverage for Kamo. Um, you you like you set up on Seismitoad, but then what, right? Uh, Feral Thorn can still break your sub and whatnot. Uh, Zero R doesn't really care about your moves. Two Infiltrator Dragapult. I, I just don't think it's the metagame for uh, for Rotom Wash right now, which is surprising because it's still a good Pokemon, right? It's just that its only way of breaking through Size and so is either Trick Ring Target or Toxicing it, which is very similar to Rotom Heat. But at least Rotom Heat has more viability outside of that, right? And Heavy Duty Boots being forced on Rotom Heat it doesn't have to take damage. Like even when the Rotom's getting back Pain Split, and that. Like, I just think that Rotom Wash just doesn't have what it takes specifically, right? And if Rotom Wash runs speed, then it doesn't check. 
Like if it if it runs bulkiness, uh, like uh, HP in defense, I don't know why I said bulkiness. It still gets bought by plus two bishop, right? And if it runs speed, it gets bought by sucker punch. At least in Rotom Heat's case, um, you have a move to threaten the Oko on Bisharp, whereas Rotom Wash doesn't as well. And also, actually, you're being number sixteen. You should just mold breaker everywhere. I do think that Scarf Trick Rotom was one of its best ones, but even then, it doesn't really gain you much. Like, sure, you click, like you can cripple something like Clef, but then you can't touch Seismitoad, right? Still, and Clef could just come in and wish. Like, it's still the same thing. Back and forth, back and forth. But, um, yeah, well, let me know your guys' thoughts on the Rotom uh, Wash dropping down to the, the UU tier. If we actually look at UU one more time. Um, Mammoth's not about to most likely be banned, but if it doesn't get banned, Rotom Wash is a nice little check. Uh, I think Rotom Wash is a good addition as a check to Cobalion and Incineroar, um, as well as not really caring too much about Weezing from there. So I think it'll be a really nice one. I think the Nasty Plot Rotom... Uh, it's pretty cool as well because of its uh, Nespa Hydro Pump Thunderbolt uh, from there. It's just very, very strong. You can use Volt Switch too. Uh, your last move. Well, Rose Raid is really good though. And, and so is uh, Rotom Mo as well. Because like, Rotom Mo can do the exact same thing and has Leaf Storm. Um, but it, it's weird because like there are a lot of good grass types in the UU tier as you can see right there, right? You have Celebi, you have... And there's no signal beam on Rotom either. You have Rose Raid, you have Rotom Mo, you have Venusaur. I don't think Venusaur is necessarily the best, but I don't think it's the worst either. Um, and I definitely think it's going to pull up a little bit with uh, Torkoal being down there too. Like, Rotom's weird. It's in a weird place. It lost signal beam, so it can't even bop Celebi like that. Um, I do think that Sub Nasty Plot still does have a purpose though, because of um, it can set up on Umbreon, doesn't care about foul play. Uh, it can set up on, on Bronzong, because Bronzong can't break the sub. Uh, unless it's running like, well, it is running Psychic usually, but I'm sure you could run some sort of nature to, to take that on too. Like, it's weird. It's a, it's a it's in a weird spot right now. I do think that it gets some nice, good switch-ins and some nice, good turns, but breaking is, I think, is going to be a little bit harder for it. But being a natural resist to steel is really nice for Cobalion, and having that super effective coverage versus Incineroar opens it up too. But like, in terms of electric types, like, I think Toxicity is stronger. In terms of water types, though, Primarina is still a nuke. Golizabod still up there. The Golizabod usage, I think it's still going to stay high-ish, even with Mammoth Slime being gone. Um, eh, maybe not, actually. It should it should drift a little bit, because that's the main thing is it checks uh, Mammoth Slime. But it still checks something like Celebi or First Impression. A lot of Pokemon are starting to run Protect 2 for First Impression as well, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, uh, Rotom, I don't think it'll be broken. Um, also, these Pokemon will more than likely not be quick banned. Uh, so they, they while some might become B.O. Knights, maybe Darmanitan or maybe they'll then Sun or whatever, I'm not sure. Um, drought. Uh, I don't think they'll be quick banned. Uh, we're they're still in the middle of a, a mammal swine test test right now, though it ends really soon. And the fact that it doesn't like we're just theory mining at this point, right? So I, I know that they're not going to quick ban it. So you, uh, you to argue. These are some nice changes. Now, most of these Pokemon uh, came out with Pokemon Home, right? Rapidash, Stunfisk, Virizion, Weezing, Alolan Raichu. Alolan Persian, uh, regular Farfetch'd, Linoon, Corsola, Decidueye, and Alolan Dougie. Now, I do think that um, Senescorch would be a pretty cool addition to the RU tier. Let's just pull up RU real quick. So RU doesn't have Manton anymore, right? RU doesn't have Manton. RU doesn't have Gudra. Uh, and Senescorch can even coil and beat the likes of Sableye because it doesn't care about the Will-O-Wisp coming out of it because of its Flash Fire. Uh, has knockoff as well, which is really nice, and leech life for recovery. I actually like that. I do think that Charizard is a staple, at least as a fire type, though, and is really good on, on sun as well as breaking. But I'm excited to see uh, the what 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 Senate Scorch can bring, right? I, I don't think it'll be anything crazy, but I think it's going to be a nice little addition because it having power up too is so cool for, for Gash it on, for Ride on, uh, for Jellison as well, though it has knockoff, so it has to decide. Is it, is it Fire Lash, Leech Life Knockoff, or uh, one of those is Power Whip? I do think Leech Life is, uh, is a great addition. Uh, very slow, though, which makes a difference in terms of checking uh, Pokemon, but um, it also doesn't deal with Colossal very well at all, uh, which is number 13 in usage, too. And um, Salazzle, if it's not really Knockoff, can at least Toxic and Protect. But maybe even a Rest Talk Coil set could be really cool because I don't see any uh, just straight up immunities to Fire unless. You know, an opposing center scorch or yeah, that's or, or nine tails with flash fire, which isn't shouldn't be the case ever. 
But uh, I'm excited to see that. I think we have to do boots. I think with Mantine being gone, I think that with Gujar being gone to threaten it special on the special side, it will be an interesting uh, addition uh, to the tier. I don't think that it had really a place in the uh, in Yu Yu. Personally, if I want to use an offensive fire type, I use Arcanine because it also provides uh, extreme speeds, which can be nice for picking off uh, a weakened Noivern or a weakened Haxorus or you know a weakened Scarf Gardevoir. Um, I don't think it was bad, but Kabalion started running Stone Edge, so it couldn't even wall its dual coverage. Uh, it couldn't come in on Mammoth Swine either, because Mammoth Swine Earthquake do a million to it. It can't come in Toxicity and also has a speed to be lower, so fell down. Uh, Claydol is an interesting spinner. Uh, I don't think Claydol was ever that good in UU personally. Uh, even if the Rapid Spin buff that they gave it speed, uh, I don't think that makes much of a difference. But in RU, huh. It's hard to tell. Uh, it's a rocker that doesn't have to worry too much about. I guess I still has to worry about defog. Even offensive. Maybe offensive could be interesting. Like an offensive, like combine. Not even offensive, but like a combine clinical. Because Clinical does actually have a pretty decent move pool. Uh, it's just weak. It's just very weak. But defensively, that's weird. Like it loses to everything, right? Uh, it doesn't like U turn or knockoffs from Persimian. Uh, we'll lose to Snorlax, lose to Barrascuta, it uses to Rillaboom. Uh, in DD, it checks. It does check in DD. Uh, if Slaz is behind a sub and Claydol comes in, Claydol loses 1v1. Uh, Psychic threatens Valplume, but Valplume threatens it back with Giga Drain as well as he strengths up. It does threaten Lick though, which is a pretty cool one. As well as Rhydon, so two rockers in the tier. Um, and Claydol, so multiple rockers in the tier, it does threaten. Um, so And it can spin on them too, but I mean, they just run Toxic and <laughs> that's, that's it. Claydol's dead. Uh, of course, you do have the option of Wish Support and, you know, Heal Bell as well. But... Uh, Clayton, eh, uh, I don't know, maybe he'll find his place in the RE tier. I think more likely he'll just keep dropping down to, to NU. Of course, this is just my speculation. Let me know your thoughts down below. Of uh, course, I'm most likely just going to keep dropping down to the NU tier. I'm not going to talk too much about it in, in RU. I don't think it's going to make a difference. And it, it was only in UU because it came out Pokemon Home. There was nothing there. Decidueye is very interesting. Uh, there's no Z-Move, so it can't run Sub-SD with its Z-Move and kind of nuke something. But... Um, as a defogger, as an offensive swords dance Pokemon, as a as a nasty plotter, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Um, switches in defensively to Pokemon like Mudsdale. Uh, can trap Vileplume, though Vileplume will just... Did you really trap Vileplume or did Vileplume trap you? Because it's just going to scrum sap you over and over. Unless maybe you run like Spirit Shackle Curse and then you just wait till Vileplume dies or runs out of scrum sap PP. I guess something like that could work. Too. but i think it's a pretty cool ghost type uh and grass type in the tier uh, of course uh Delmize can spin and has anchor shot too so there's a little bit competition from there the exact same typing though the situai is just a little bit faster it does have access to uh low sweep uh let me check if the situai actually gets low kick as well real quick i know it gets low sweep does it get it just gets low sweep it doesn't get low kick so i mean that would have been cool for um something like snorlax i think but I'm excited to see how it does. I uh, might end up staying Ardu. It's not terrible. You know, it's it's a cool offensive. Ghost is a great offensive typing. Look, Silvali Ghost right there, number 36. But Silvali Ghost also has a base 120 attack that gets stabbed and it has a speed. Um, in terms of the pivot, it's interesting, I think. Uh, there's a lot of Ghost types in this tier, though, that it faces competition from, and a lot of Grass types, too. Uh, Alolan Duck Show. Don't think it makes a huge difference in this tier. I think one thing about Alolan Dougie is that uh, it would have been really cool in RU had Gigalith still been in RU because Sand Force legitimately would have been a threat. Like Life Orb Earthquake with Sand Force with two kill things like Vileplume. Uh, it would have Stone Edge to deal with Mantine. Like it would be a legitimate threat. Unfortunately, Gigalith is UU. So, and uh, Hippowdon is also OU, right? Uh, and then uh, besides that, what you have? Baby Hippo? Hippo Batas? Yeah, sure, try that out in NU, <laughs> or, or PU, whatever, where Dugtrio keeps going down to it. I actually do think that Alolan Dugtrio does have a niche in the UU tier, and uh, I did a live with it recently if you guys want to check that out. Uh, Farfetch, what the hell are you doing here, bro? Keep going, keep dropping. You're trying your best, but keep dropping. Just keep going down to the uh, the, the ZU tier. Just keep falling, you're fine. Nobody, nobody got, you'll, you'll know when you got to stop, bro. If you see Pokemon taller than you, don't stop there. All right, so Frostmoth, you you are you, huh? I like Ice. I love Ice as an offensive typing. I love Frostmoth's Ice Scales ability, and um, 
you know, being able to strug off hits from Ndidi, being able to strug off hits from Vileplume, and it's strong too. Like Ice Beam is very strong when boosted. Uh, this could be it. This could be it. This could be the tier for it. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but does have Giga Drain to threaten uh, things like Jellicent too. It's very slow though, which I think makes a difference. Huh? Heavy duty boots. I wonder if specs would be any good. Probably not. Like I mean, why would I run that specs bug when I can run specs Vika Bolt, which has arguably better coverage? Um, like specs Charizard, specs Nine Tails, which is faster. Huh? I don't know. Uh, I do think that it does have a niche as a Quiver Dance user in the tier uh, because there are none. <laughs> I'm just looking at the tier. There are none. Uh, but. And Ice is a great offensive typing, especially versus a lot of defensive Pokemon here. But I don't know. Like, Frostmoth was like the, uh, I don't think it, it's any good in UU either. Like, it just, like it's good or bad, but like, it, it still gets, despite resisting, man, like Mamoswine's Earthquake still did too much to it in UU. And then you also had Cobali on what you had to worry about too. Um, the multiple first impression mods. I think that Frostmoth also needs access to Roost. I think that'll be a, a big difference for it when it actually has reliable recovery in that. Otherwise, you have to run like Chestnut Resto. But uh, I see it being maybe maybe dropping down to and you maybe maybe something with Aurora Veil though. It could be really cool, like Aurora Veil Vanillix plus uh, Frostmoth, because then it actually has to add a bulk not only on the special side but on the physical side can they let it break a little bit. Yeah, I can see. I can see it doing some work. It's not bad. Ice Beam strong and neutral. I like that on a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. And you can even run it with Sun and like Weather Ball so you can deal with Copperaja and, and, and Steel types like a Scavalier. So maybe, maybe we'll see something like that. That'd be a really cool one. Uh, Linoon dropped down. If they did not nerf the, um, if they didn't nerf the, the Super Citrus Berries as a lot of people call them or like, you know, Figgy Berry, Figgy Berry, Ipapa Berry, I think this would be a really cool uh, drop for Linoon because Belly Drum Linoon is a legitimate threat. Uh, a lot of the ghost types in the tier, though, are faster. Uh, so Volley Ghost can just boom on it and kill it. Uh, Rotom is faster and can Willow Wisp it. But other than that, like Belly Drum Extreme Speed, Belly Drum Stomping Tantrum isn't too bad. You weaken Steel Legs, you knock it off. We can Vile Plume a little bit, too. Like, you knock it off with an opposing teammate. So um, I don't think this is the tier where Linoon stays, are you, personally? I think that the... the a lot the, no, the mons that are actually around and plus the fact that you have psychic terrain down here too right with Ndidi at number five so it, it can't even do what it's supposed to do which is belly drum extreme speed i don't think this is the tier where uh where Lai Nguyen lands it's not gonna be i don't think it's gonna be already like last generation i just think that belly drumming isn't as easy as it was before i mean you just click the move it's not that hard um but uh yeah i don't think it's gonna be the uh, the same as it was before maybe and you uh, let me know your thoughts on that too More, uh melton dropped down and again that's another mon just like Farfetch, that's going to keep going. Uh, it does have Magnet Pull. So if you are not, if you don't have any fear, you can try and trap a Steelix and for a turn. Just you don't give them a turn switch. That's it. That's it. Maybe you can uh, trap a Choice Band of Scavalier, right? And then you use like Harden and, and, and Thunderbolt to beat it 1v1. <laughs> Melton is a baby. And it's going to remain a baby. And it's going, it's, yeah, it's not going to. They use Acid Armor and you use Thunderbolt and you, and you beat a Scavalier. Maybe. Because it's it's very strong. And Milton is not. Bulgy. Um, Morpico. I like this one. I really like, I think Morpico has a niche in OU too. Well, maybe not in current OU, but it did before. But like, it's ability to break. Uh, I love Aura Wheel. I think Choice Band Aura Wheel is going to be really cool. But of course, like with Steelix, with, with Ride On, with... With um, even freaking Colossal down here too. Uh, while it does, it does have Seed Bomb, I think that's going to be really tough for it to still break through uh, Licks. It can't really break through Vile Plume either. It's, it's Dark Move is very strong, you know, when it is a Dark Move. Uh, 110 and everything, but because you start off in a Happy Mode and you can't just start off in Angry Mode and just uh, Choice Bin or break into a, a Steelix and do like 40%, right? Um, that's going to really hurt it here. So uh, I do think it will have a niche as a spinner and uh, a spinner that can actually beat the ghost types, which I think is really cool. Um, I maybe, maybe parting shot like rapid spin, protect or or a break or a wheel. Not or a break, um, not Zygarde's useless ability, but uh, that could be really cool. Heavy duty boots, um, allowing it to at least obviously change forms, but also um, 
rapid spin and party shot allowance. So I think that'd be pretty cool, like little tech for it. maybe if you're running an offensive team and you know you want something that could be above. This is a really good heavy duty boots Pokemon, so I think that could be pretty cool. And you might see something like mixed with like Seed Bomb, Life Orb, or anything to deal with like Gastro or Rhydon. And I say those both loosely because <laughs> Rhydon specifically is definitely gonna eat that up. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, with Celix and Vileplume and Rhydon down, I think it's gonna be tough for it to be a top tier threat. Alolan Persian can also parting shot around, foul play, maybe even nasty plot and whatnot. Uh, not typically are you. It losing Z moves makes a big difference too. I think it's gonna go down. Uh, I think nasty plot uh, Raichu can be unironically good. Its ability to Oko Steelix with plus two focus blast, knock out Vileplume with plus two psychic, and you know, actually threaten Pokemon. Guja's no longer in the tier either. Uh, threaten things like Zatu as well, has Grass Knot or Surf for Mudsdale. Um, yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. I think it'd actually be like solid. It's also faster than Charizard. So it has a good speed tier. Very good speed tier. And actually, I think it's uh, besides Whimsicott and Barrascuta and Salazzle, uh, I believe it is. Oh, Bolton. Um, but it's one of the faster. And Tinchino. Okay. So it's it's in top 10 speed of the tier. Uh, and it has strong stabs as well. Uh, very weak, but like maybe with like Aurora Veil too. Assuming Aurora Veil still around. I'm not just like lying. I'm pretty sure Aurora Veil hasn't been banned everywhere yet. Um, that's typically something that happens like during grand, like the Smogon Tournament Grand Slam because people start to see, oh, this is this, and this is good, this is bad. Um, but I do think that it can be unironically good, very good actually. Um, and just have to worry about like Scarf Passimian and Scarf Rillaboom, <laughs> you turning out and doing a million or knocking them off. Uh, Swords Dance, Rapidash, Rapidash dropping down from you to Ryu. It actually has a good speed tier as well as an offensive physical fire type, which is something that this tier does not have. Um, because it has the special fire types in, uh, in Charizard and Salazzle. Um, and I mean, I've seen Dragon Dance Charizard too. That's not fair. And I've seen Body Press, Heat Crash, Salazzle, uh, um, Colossal as well. So maybe that's not fair to say, but I do like uh, I do like the fact that it has like Sword Dance, it has Low Kick for Snorlax. Uh, it has Flare Bullets, obviously, which threatens Vaflum and Steelix. It has Wild Charge, which threatens Water Types too. So maybe, hey, and it has Flash Fire too. So it switches in on Specs Nine Tails. Hey, hold up. I don't think it's going to be fantastic, but it might have a niche down here. Let me know your thoughts on that, though. Regular Stunfisk has uh, stayed in this tier, or is now in this tier. And um, and we're moving on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a Stunfisk, man. It's going to keep dropping. It's not anything good. That's it. Verizion, though, has uh, Swords Dance, though, has Zen Headbutt in its arsenal. It's close combat. So... Uh, the, the unfortunate thing about Verizion is that if you run Zen Headbutt, you're walled by Zatu. If you run Stone Edge, you're walled by Vileplume. But of course, you can fix that by running Verizion plus Zatu to help you deal with Vileplume. So maybe an SD Stone Edge set be pretty cool. Deal with Charizard, deal with Slazzle upon switching and whatnot. Um, I think Close Common and Leaf Blade are obviously very strong. I think Lumberry, this might be Verizion's home, uh, though it might dip down to NU as well. Uh, but it's not, like, it's not bad. Like, offensively, it's not bad. It's just Vile Plumes there, but I mean, if you can deal with that via Zatu on the Strem Saps and whatnot, um, it could be cool offensive Pokemon, too. And then Weezing set down here. So Weezing gives another Passimian check to the tier. Uh, gives another uh, T-Spiker, solid T-Spiker for the tier. Which the tier actually didn't really have too much. Or at least based on, obviously you can use Pokemon from down below, but I mean, what do you have? A Selgor, the Rune. That's about it, right? Like looking at this. But I don't think T-Spikes are very strong considering Vapum is around, but I could be wrong about that. And also the fact that you can't really beat Zatu with Weezing. Maybe you can Sludge Bomb or like Life Orb Thunder Blow or anything like that. Uh, but it does give the tier uh, a Passimian check. And that's something that NU had before too uh, with Wish Support from something like Token Amaru. Like you'd see things like that. So Weezing typically... This is R you were looking at though. So NU had that. Uh, so I'm, I feel like that trend will be followed. And it will go back down. I'm happy that Passimian is like top 10 in RU. I'm happy that I got Defiant and whatnot. Deserves to be here. So from RU to NU, we have Alcremie, Driftblim. Uh, is that female in DD? Uh, Mr. Rhyme, Quagsire, and regular Slowpoke. Now that Slowpoke going to keep dropping. Uh, the Delirium Slowpoke. Uh, that Slowpoke going to keep dropping. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, Alcremie, honestly, like... I don't think it was, I don't think Ryu was the metagame for it. When Salazzle is like one of the best Pokemon, or when you have to like, you don't even beat Vileplume to an extent, or like when you have Caparaja and Colossal up here too. Yeah, 
I don't think that was the tier for it. Uh, but if we look at the NU tier, let's see how NU benefits from this. I think that'll be the best. Um, Akrimi is a solid fairy type. It does. They do have Rapidash, which is up there too, and they have Clef as well. Um, but it's a nice and solid fairy type for the tier, which is cool for Pokemon like Sock. Uh, decent for Sneasel spamming knockoff. Of course, the number two and three Pokemon can deal with it as well. But it's nice for Scrafty too, which is number seven. Uh, but Scrafty moved up to Arius, so that doesn't even matter. Huh. I think I'll, I'll find its place in NU most likely as uh, a nice little offensive combine or even defensive. It has a good speed tier and it has good uh, bulk on the special side. So. I think that makes a difference for Alcremie when boosting uh, alongside like a Jolteon attacking. Like base 121 special defense is very, very good. So my final little place here has a decent move pool too. Mystical Fire is a big one uh, as well. Driftlim is down here too. Uh, maybe the Will-O-Wisp Defog Shrev Sap set could work. However, most of the Pokemon down here are very, very uh, good at dealing with Driftlim. You have Sneasel with knocking it off. Toxicroak does the same thing. It's faster. Haunter Shadow Balls. Uh, Kafarius eats the Shadow Ball from Driftman and can smack it back with it too. Uh, and then you got, even Glower, you have like Blizzard from uh, Obama Snow, which can also set Aurora Veil on it. You have Paz on you have Jolteon. Like, the, the, and you have Drampa right there at number 15 as well, which Driftman can't ever really break through. It also has uh, Shrimp Sap, so Driftman can't even, or it also has Sap Super, so Driftman can't even Shrimp Sap it. So I think Driftman might keep going down, but. Maybe like the defog support set could still be decent. Yeah. Because um, it could defog on Garbodor, which is a pretty big one uh, as well. It still threatens Toxicroak with will o -Wisp too. But Ndidi down here. So they get uh, what, a Psychic Terrain Mon now. Uh, looking at that, I mean, that's cool for boosting up Rapid Dash. Uh, maybe some Unburdened Mons down here. Himalay down here, though. But I believe uh, Thievul can be used down here. Uh, because Thievo, I believe, is PU. And um, offensively, maybe a Scarf and Didi can still be cool for Toxicroak. Checking Haunter. Um, checking Garbodor. Uh, it can have Mystical Fire Dazzling Gleam for Sneasel. If it's, if it's banned as Sneasel, it, if it like, rocks up, I'm sure it does enough to KO it. Or at least really close. Uh, so I think that's a really cool um, terrain one for the tier. But even then, like Psychic Type being is a bad. Especially when you have Dazzling Gleam as coverage. So I mean, that's, I think that's a cool addition for the tier itself. We got Mr. Rhyme down here. Now, Mr. Mime is number 32 in usage. Offensive Mr. Mime is really cool because how fast it is and it's good move pull and whatnot. Mr. Rhyme can probably do something similar. Um, heavy Duty Boots, it's bulkier than Mr. Uh, Mime because I think Mr. Mime, a uh, glaring Mr. Mime, I think runs Heavy Duty Boots most of the time. I've seen somewhat of Violite, but um, yeah, so if they're running Heavy Duty Boots, then Mr. Rhyme is bulkier, uh, slower even though slower. Uh, can still threaten stuff with freeze dry. Eh, miffy about this mon too. Like I would rather use Mr. Mime than Mr. Rhyme just because of the high speed tier. You know, being fast in something like Toxicroak and even being able to encore uh, in Swords Dance or anything like that, I think is big in avoiding Sucker Punch and stuff like that. And Quagsire fell down from RU to NU. Uh, Quagsire is a pretty big pick, not necessarily because you can use it everywhere. You can literally use it anywhere, but it's a good answer to Sanaconda. It's a good answer to Toxicroak. It's a good answer to Sneasel. It's a good answer to Garbodor. Though Garbodor does have Seed Bomb. Uh, it's a good answer to Togedomaru. Um, so, and it checks Dolceon as well. Like, so it's a, and Swords Dance. Like, it's a good unaware mod. It's a very good unaware mod that fell down. So I think that's going to make a difference in terms of at least the top 10 in usage, maybe slightly. Um, a more like bulky offenses or balances or even semi-stall based builds, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, and then last but not least, we have from NU to PU, Arctivish. Uh, Drigovish, Drigazolt. <laughs> Arctizolt, <laughs> there we go. 15th times the charm. So from NU to PU, we have Arctizolt. And now NU lost, uh, or PU, excuse me, lost uh, Ninjask. Um, they still have Silvali Ground, but Arctizolt has nice bolt beam coverage. Which is very cool because it can deal with things like Artivish, it can deal with things like Lapras, it still deals with things like Roselia while not being weak to them like Artivish is. Um, and Bolt Beak is very, very strong. And I think that Electric is very is more powerful than Water when it's paired with Ice, right? Whereas, um, the main reason I say this is because of all the Water types, right? And you also have the Ground types down there, but you can deal with them too. Also, the fact that Trap Inch no longer has uh, access to Arena Trap because Arena Trap got banned in OU, which calls all the way down. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool tier for our Arctizolt. And um, 
especially because the speed tier still makes it faster than the bulkier Pokemon like Musharna too. Uh, so I'm excited to see how Bolt Beak ends up making a difference, uh, whether it be Bandit or Scarf. Uh, not having to worry about being trapped by uh, Trap Inch makes a big, big, big difference for that, and just play in general, and also not being outsped by Ninjask and taking and taking like 30% from U-turn, and also you know taking Rocks and having to switch back out. Um, also. Arctazolt having the um, the Volt Absorb makes, um, well, it, it currently makes Pokemon like Venetra think twice if they're choiced from clicking Volt Switch and Thunderbolt. Obviously, they can overheat and deal with you, but that makes them think twice. So I think that's a pretty cool addition for PU. For those that play PU, please let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, and yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. So guys, let me know your thoughts on all the changes and whatnot. Of course, uh, leave a like on the video. You can check out my uh, Java Draco merch as well. That's available until uh, tomorrow. Um, yeah, tomorrow will be the last day and uh, and yeah if you want to pick it up you can uh, by using code Draco you can get 15% off so yeah I will see you guys next time goodbye my friends